<laughs> and good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever it is for you, wherever the hell you are. I'm Bob K6UDA, and welcome to my uh, Thursday live stream where sometimes we just BS with each other and sometimes we actually have something to discuss. And today, we actually do have something to discuss. So, oh, I was muted. That sucked. <laughs> Good morning, guys. Um, today, special guests uh, with me. Um, I've got Don, W6GPS, a lot of you guys uh, in the D74 world know who Don is. Don is kind of the expert. <coughs> uh, and, uh, and I've got uh, one of my local uh, uh, APRS guys on who's done a lot of satellite work. And uh, he'll be calling in. Because, guys, frankly, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I'm learning this stuff just like you. And as far as the ISS is concerned, I haven't even made a contact yet. That's how sucky I am at this. Anyway, let's go to, uh, before we get really started here, um, go to camera three and... Uh, from Neil, K-I-5-J-E-O. Um, Neil, thank you so much for Edmund uh, Police and, uh, and Edmund SWAT. And there is their, uh, that's a sticker. And there's a patch that will definitely be going up on the, uh, on the wall. I got to read this. This is such a cool... Thank you note here. This is uh, this this is awesome. Uh, it says K six UDA. Thanks for all you do for the ham hobby and getting people involved. Your channel was the main reason I got into the hobby. I love the enthusiasm and info. Thanks K I five J E O. Possibly K six J X O. By the time you get this and uh nope neil your old call sign is still coming up in the uh on qrz so uh let's see with that uh i am going to go ahead and bring in oh you know what i told you guys last week i was going to show you my new my new baby um this my friends, is my uh, my new Glock 19. This is going to be my off-duty carry gun uh, because just because you know what, um, 15 rounds. <laughs> that's you know in today's day and age, that's a lot better than uh, than seven or eight rounds in one of my 1911s. This thing is gorgeous. This was custom built by uh, Hotel Mike in Texas. And, uh, and he built this thing completely to my specs. Uh, agency, agency barrel here. And the, uh, and the barrel is uh, twisted. It's got these nice twists in it. Very, very nice. Um, Hollow Sun 507 uh, version 2 suppressor height sights. Uh, Zev slide on here, Zev trigger. Uh, this is a, uh, a full stage trigger. And uh, um, I believe, I don't know, but if uh, there's any Wilson Combat fans out there, you might recognize this uh, custom stippling job. <coughs> it's the Rona. Anyway, 
wanted to show that bad boy off uh, the newest one there. Let's uh, let's go over to camera number two, uh, and I will say hi to a couple of you guys. Uh, oh, by the way, um, you know the uh, super chat line is open. That is the quickest way to um, uh, to get yourself in there uh, and and get your uh, get your comments noticed by me. Uh, George, greetings from Baton Rouge. George, how you doing? Uh, let's see, Todd. Uh, whoop! And that that comment just uh, flew by me. <laughs> uh, let's see. Hello from uh, Northeast uh, Maryland. Thanks for the videos. Newish ham here, and they have help from Steve Brannon. Thank you, Steve. Uh, thanks for being here. Thanks for playing and th and congratulations on getting into the hobby. Uh, let's see, Todd, aloha and good morning. Uh, my friend Bernard, uh, hello everybody. And, uh, my other special guest for today, uh, KM6LYW Radio, Craig, uh, in cool California, He'll be uh, joining us a little bit later. 58 people on the stream right now and nine thumbs up. I know it's a little early, but hey, do me a solid and just smash that thumbs up button. <laughs> uh, let's see that Glock. Uh, let's see. Will that Glock take the 40 cal mags uh, for round capacity? Um, I don't know. This is a Glock 19 chambered in nine millimeter as all Glock 19s are. Uh, I don't know if it can be easily converted to a 40, but I probably wouldn't convert it to a 40 since, um, I've got a couple of forties and not my, not my favorite round. It's just a little snappy on the uptake. And, uh, and so I, I prefer not, uh, let's see. We have, uh, we have Todd in there with a super chat, uh, pair character stretching his arm forward, raising his thumb up. Thank you, Todd, raising your thumbs up 21 thumbs up now. And uh, um, 69 people on the uh, on the chat. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put the uh, uh, put the call out here for Don, our first guest. Uh, for those of you who don't know who Don is, um, Don is whoop the Skype theory. I don't know what. Is going on with that? Come on, there we go. We'll see if Don comes in, and uh, if Don picks up the uh, picks up the Skype there uh, while we're waiting for Don to jump in there. Oops! Oh, God, that sucks, <laughs> Don. Dawn, pick up the phone. We're on the air. We're live on the air. Oh well. Okay, we'll give him uh we'll give him another shot later. Ah, and there he is. Answering this call. And uh if Dawn picks up the uh There it is. There. Uh, while we're Hey there. Hey Dawn, I'm uh yeah, do Turn your uh, turn the volume down on the uh, on the YouTube so we don't get that. Uh, uh, oh, I I done we don't shut get it the off. Delay. Yeah. Hey, okay. John. Good to see you. Thanks for. Uh, hey, thanks for. Hold it, hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. First of all, this is a Jack Bauer special. Ooh. That is a um, H and K expert. Very, very nice. And for the little guys, this is a little <laughs> small. 
The baby. Index your finger. Index. There you go. There we go. Sorry about that. <laughs> That's the, the firearms instructor in me. <laughs> okay, let's do that again. Thank okay. you. There you go. Beautiful. All right. Beautiful. And Thank these, you. These are great. These are great guns. All yeah, right. Now that, now that we got our guns all out of place here. Oh, that's so. awesome. Very, very cool. Uh, Don, uh, for those of you who do not know who Don is, Don is kind of the, you're not a Kenwood employee, but you're pretty well connected in the Kenwood ecosystem. I'm the free Kenwood help. The free Kenwood help. Okay. Yeah. And Don is, uh, Don is pretty much, as you might be able to tell from his call sign, W6GPS, uh, Don is pretty much the expert when it comes to uh, all the GPS functions and APRS functions on the, uh, on the Kenwood radios, the D72, the D74. And today we're going to be talking uh, pretty much about the D-74 and satellite operations with the D-74. So uh, let me uh, let me go ahead. Now, Don, I do have to tell you, I'm going to turn it over to you, kind of let you take us through setting this radio up uh, for, um, for field operations with satellites and in particular doing... Uh, doing ISS contacts. Now, uh, full disclosure, guys, I am not an expert. I, as a matter of fact, I've been trying for the past three days to make a, a contact through the ISS, and I have not been able to hit it yet. And as a matter of fact, the last uh, two days, I have had a miserable time even picking up packets from ISS. So um, uh, let's see. I'm not going to switch to camera three on my side. I'm going to leave it here. And uh, and then, Don, I'm going to let you kind of take it away and uh, and talk about uh, talk about setting this thing up for operations for ISS. Okay, so here we go, and I'll try to make this as uh, less painful as possible. Um, first of all, if you let me plug my, if you go to my YouTube channel, if you're a D74 user, after the show, I will have a link for a default configuration for ISS. And so what I tell people to do is go ahead and save the configuration your radio is using right now, like if you're on uh, D-Star or whatever, save it out default the radio. And when I say default the radio, that's what I mean. It's default it. Then, then there's just a few steps that you have to do if you want to go ahead and program it. So I'm just going to call it out. I'm just going to call it out uh, just as quick as I can here. But basically, you're going to put your call sign back in. Uh, you, you could keep the Kenwood icon. Status text, what I would do on the status text is I put like via ISS so people know that you're going through the ISS and maybe your um, maybe your email address um, and set that to one to one. OK, uh, packet path, you're going to have to go to others and that's menu number uh, 504 and select ARIS, A-R-I-S-S. -S. And the reason you want to select ARIS is there's more than the ISS going on. There's about three or four packet-enabled satellites, and I'm talking about a PSAT, and a PSAT is a cubicle version of my cell phone with 300 mil 350 milliwatts, and you're actually going to be able to contact that. So Uncle Bob Berninga made it simple. So you set the path to IRIS, A-R-I-S-S. Data speed, that's default. Uh, radio's an A-band. I'm just trying to make it simple. Now, DC, DCD sense, and that's menu 507, I would say detect data. And then the reason is, if you're sitting there pinging somebody and, and someone pings at the same time, the radio will not transmit until the packet is done, and then it'll immediately transpat, transmit. Uh, transmit delay is default is at uh, 200 milliseconds. 
and uh, comments and service. That's that's kind of basic stuff. Now, TX Control, uh, set it to auto for 30 minutes, but you're not going to be auto beaconing. And I'll explain that. I'll explain that when I when I get done with all the setups. So initial interval is going to be 30 minutes. And uh, the other things that I would do is I turn off any of the power settings, APO, uh, anything that's going to go to sleep. And I guarantee you, Bob, that's probably the problem you've had is you, you went to sleep. Your radio went to sleep. So all the APOs and anything that saves, that saves power, just turn that off. Um, let's see. Let me hang on here. Uh, notification, uh, just leave the default settings there and uh, display always. So when you get a when you get a reception, it'll pop up. Um, let's see on the, on the GPS. Just use the GPS, turn it on, and um, and just the basic default settings. So it, it's it's not a whole lot, but if you want to download my uh, file, it'll be on my uh, YouTube channel W6 GPS uh, after the show. So the technique that I use is I leave the squelch open. Okay. And I do have another radio here, D72, right next to me. And, excuse me there, when I hear the satellite, I send out a, uh, I send out a beacon, and here's what it sounds like. So when you start hearing this noise, let's pretend like this is the ISS. Wait just a second or two, and then send out a, send out a ping. Now, don't just keep on sending pings. It doesn't like that. Just send a ping. Other guys are other guys are sending out sending out. So that's basically the radio portion. And and on the list, like today, maybe 30 minutes ago, uh, with my um, the satellite that I think is going to be the winner, satellite antenna is going to be the winner. I got like 18. I got like um, nine contacts in a eight minute pass. Wow. And that was right here. Okay. So so. And I was able to get digipeded because I showed up on the uh, on the ARISnet. If you go to ARISS.net, uh, after you've had a satellite uh, pass over and you've tried to make a, a beacon, if you put, you'll see on the list. And if your name, if your call sign's on the list, uh, then you, you made it through the system. And also, I also have a auto reply. That's another thing I forgot to tell you. I have a message with my email address. And auto auto reply on there so that if someone sends a message, maybe it's a ground station and he has more hands hands on going on versus me trying to hold an antenna radio and my uh, direction finding device. Um, the radio will actually send a message back to him. So there's a way of getting around that. My uh, my uh, default settings that'll be uh, online uh, later uh, explains that. So. Now, part of the technique is where are you going to find us? Where are you going to find the ISS? And the tool that I use is ISS detector. And for just a couple of bucks more, you can actually put. I got all the PSATs and I've got the ISS, the star links in there, and it's going to tell you the uh, direction and the pass and the time and all that kind of good stuff. Um, and what's cool is when you select something. Uh, you can see it, see where it's actually at right there. And there's a mode called radar and radar is basically you set this down and you see that there's a little arrow. Let's see if I can get the glare off. There is an arrow and it shows where it's coming in. But as that arrow, that arrow right there is moving, it tells you the elevation. So you got two, two directions. The azimuth is going to be this. It's going to be your compass heading. That's the azimuth. Okay. Elevation is going to be this, this axis right here. So this tells you the entry point of what azimuth or heading where the, uh, where the AOS, acquisition of, satellite, of signal, LOS, loss of signal, and it gives you elevation. So you just kind of sit there. And that way it gives you kind of a reference point. So. That's the tools that I use there. And now we're going to talk about antennas. I will say, I will say, I have packed, picked up the PSAT, 350 milliwatts, the ISS, which I think is a five watt Ericsson handy talkie right now, or something else. And I have uh, picked up those on 
my D74 with a stock antenna. Now, if you get an ISS pass to where you could see it at nighttime, it will help you to kind of keep uh, tracking it versus staring at your phone. You're a little more accurate, getting a visual representation. But what I have found, I have had more success with like 45 degree, 45 degree passes, and I'm, I'm hitting the satellite broadside versus an overhead pass. And I, don't, I just don't know what the difference is. And again, uh, I've been doing this for about three weeks now, and I've been kind of hit and miss, hit and miss. And finally, I've, I think I found a, a success formula. So you can use the stock antenna if you just want a casual experience. So then the next one, next little antenna is um, signal stuff. And these are really nice. This is a dual band, two meter, 440 antenna. And it's about, uh, I think, 18 inches long. Very flexible, very well built. It's only like 20 bucks. And I did a real, real good receiving and, and made, a, made a contact with this little $20 antenna. And um, so, but the coup d'etat or the, the grand poobar of antennas, if you want to go with just a whip antenna, I'm going to recommend the Diamond SRH770S. And this is flexible right here. It's not a tri-band. You know, it's not doesn't have 220. This thing is long. This thing's like 27 inches long. Okay. Like the Abri. I, oh yeah. <laughs> so so this this will pick up anything. I I constantly will pick up PSAT, ISS, and I use this on my D72 as a spotter. I just set it on the on the, the hood of my car and I kind of listen, you know, kind of listen to make a comparison. And there's been times when this has actually picked up better than me aiming at something. Don't ask me why. It's just flipping magic. So now, those are the whip antennas. Now, now for what everybody's been waiting for, let me just talk about a few more things here. Now, this is a very good diamond mono band, two meter beam, 59 bucks. It works very well. The only thing is it's heavy, Bob. And when you're doing those 10 minutes, 10 minute passes, your forearms are gonna turn to rubber. So if you want it, if you're kind of El Cheapo, uh, you can get this for like 59 bucks. So then everybody talked about the Arrow 2. And the Arrow 2, right here, it's got a, has a, du this one has a duplexer in the handle. It's 440 and two meters. I had very, very good, very, very good success with this. Uh, it did outperform the diamond when it come to transmission. I, I basically had several passes that were kind of in the same acquisition and the transmit power, um, I wouldn't say it's $60 difference, but it did improve, uh, especially the low, the low uh, angles, the very low angles. And um, for a length of time, it did, it did uh, pick it up. It does have a built-in duplexer. Uh, there are people that will say that there's a little bit of duplex loss. I can't really uh, authenticate that, but it does make sense that there's just a tech. But really, it's the transmission power. Uh, in fact, today when I was messing around, I had a PSAT going on the western horizon and the uh, ISS at the eastern horizon. So they were 180 degrees apart. And my beam antenna, the next beam, uh, it was picking up. Both of them. In fact, when I had it pointed to the ISS at the east, it was picking up the PSAT at 350 milliwatts to the west. So reception is not the big factor. I will say getting your five watts to be more effective and to punch through, uh, I think the winner is. And first of all, let me make a, a disclaimer here. Nobody has given me anything. I have purchased this stuff uh, with and I'm making an objective um, observation. So this is the elk antenna. And the elk antenna is a log periodic dual band. There is no duplexer. There's one connection right at the front here. Um, some people may laugh at the clunky PVC support mechanism, but I'm telling you, it's, good, it's easy to adapt this to a tripod. So... If you were if if 
both the uh, arrow and the elk were evenly transmitting. And again, I can't prove that, that if they were even, the deal breaker is this is about 30% lighter, easier on the forearm, and it's easy to add to a tripod. Um, there is no duplexer. Um, the price wise prices, they're comparable. This one was a little bit more because it has the black, the black, uh, coating on it. So now as far as techniques go, you're just going to have to listen. And, and again, if you have the, uh, second, uh, APRS radio or any radio for that matter, just listening in with a decent antenna, it kind of gives you an idea. Hey, if it's not, if it's not receiving with a, uh, horizontal polarization, let me just turn it vertical and see what happens because there is there is some pol pol polariza polarization that you have to consider when you're playing with the antennas so what i have learned though in all my passes and all my successful receptions instead of being at the at the absolute like the highest elevation kind of what we would call a sweet spot i'm finding that as the iss is leaving me I'm getting better, better comms. And I don't know why. Okay. So the uh, cool thing is, is you want to try to see how far a contact is. And uh, I'm not a, a trigonometry uh, expert or a geometry expert. I barely got through algebra. Uh, um, linear equations got me. That was the end of me. But anyway, if you have a circle of the footprint of the ISS, and I'm at the uh, 180 degrees. I'm at the bottom, and my down here in Tennessee. And you got a guy in New York, way up here at the top, at at a perfectly 180 degrees from me. And he, we all make a transmission. That would be the longest um, contact you can make, at, 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 providing you're both making it like at one degree above the horizon. So that's what that's what kind of the cool part is, is to get a far contact, get as far as you can. So that's kind of uh, there. Uh, you can experiment with a radio in narrow band. You can easily put it in narrow band. The uh, they recommend narrow band, although I don't see a lot of people using narrow band. Um, I I think it, it would work either way. Uh, probably the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get a commercial handy talkie that I can actually put in transmit narrow band. And I'm sure that the D74 is somewhere in there. It's got a setting and receive to set it in narrow band. And I'm sure there's some place that I could set it into transmit and narrow band just to try that. But anyway, the whole thing is it's it is experimenting. It is uh, having a good time. Uh, make sure that somewhere you put your email address on there simply because that way I, I, I have people have emailed me just the last couple of uh, the last couple of uh, passes. Uh, and it's kind of cool. So, again, uh, there's a whole bunch of my D74 uh, um, <clears throat> cadre uh, out there on the uh, Facebook forums, and I was kind of experimenting with this, and everybody got all excited. So, so if it's going to be a whip antenna, uh, get you one of whatever it is. The longer, the better. Let's get the longest antenna you can. Um, if it's if you were choosing between the arrow and the elk, I'm leaning more towards the elk simply because it's easier on me, it's easier to mount. Uh, re reception is about the same. Transmission, I have to say that the elk edged it just a little bit, but it's not scientific. I don't have you know, a transmitter site to measure this, but it seemed to, I got more uh, DigiPeats back. So that's about, that's about it. Gotcha. <clears throat> um, quick question, because I'm using, uh, I'm using my arrow antenna also, and um, as uh, as one of the local guys put it, uh, you you raise this up and you do the sky shaman thing <laughs> to try to find the sweet spot. Uh, any hints on on how you found the sweet yet to uh, to make that contact that first contact? through ISS I just okay first of all first of all uh, the handle should give you a hint that that's the back of the antenna so whatever you're using for a handle put that towards you 
and then basically you aim it. I'm gonna use my uh, I'm gonna use my phone as a mini antenna. Okay, so if this is the handle right here, this is the front. With the mm -hmm. elk, the feed point is at the front. Okay, with the uh, arrow, it has a gamma match, and basically the longer element is going to be closest towards you because mm -hmm. it, it is longer in the back. It does have a reflector and then uh, a director. So what I've found though, is you just, you just have to, when you, when you start hearing it, you, you turn one way, wait for another, <laughs> excuse me, wait for another one and then turn it 90 degrees. And it all depends on the orientation. It all depends if the guy's on uh, right above you, if he's coming at 45 degrees from left to right or right to left. You know, there's, there's a whole, that's why you have to kind of play around, just kind of, you just have to kind of move it around, move it around. And, and uh, I, I'm, once I, once I see the meter and, and it will jump from like an S3 to, yeah. to full scale. Yeah. If, if it's just, if it's just right. And again, people have to understand you've got multi-path factors. You've got, stuff bouncing off your car that's phase canceling you've got the ground that's phase canceling you've got your body that's doing something the feed point of the coax so there's a whole lot of little variables in there you just have to kind of move it around now i would say don't waste your time on anything below 10 10 degrees above the horizon because uh unless it's just absolutely nothing there um and there i've had one or two hits at six and seven degrees, but it was just lucky. You have you have bending effects of the atmosphere, tropospheric propagation. You got you got some of those things anomalies that affect the signal. So you just have to kind of move it around, move it around. Watch your signal. I I again I use the uh, I use the squelch open because that way uh, if I don't get a ping, but I can at least I can hear them. I can repolarize it. Mm hmm. So anyway, very nice. Uh, the, other, the other day, the other day, it was it was a low pass and I got a guy in Bismarck. Um, no, uh, Fargo, Fargo, Dakota, Dakota, Fargo, Minnesota, uh -huh. or, uh, Dakota, whatever it is. Anyway, they made a TV show about it. But anyway, um, <laughs> anyway, it was about a cop, too. So anyway, but uh, so you just don't know. And um Sometimes if you hit the uh, ISS real good and it's digipeating, uh, you'll get your call back. But the way you really check is go to aris.net and just see if you're on the list there. Uh, one more note here on the PSATs. Mm -hmm. There's a PSAT that says PSAT 1. And uh, if, it's, if it says PSAT with a dash 1, that means it's not digipating. Now, then they have another one that's uh, it's a PSAT 2, I believe. But it's US, USNA1 and US Naval Academy 1. And that's Bob Berninga's uh, um, Naval Academy students that build these things. And it is in honor of the guy there at the Navy Academy that was part of the GPS uh, development. So anyway, but that's that's a whole different matter. I mean, there's a whole bunch of cool stuff. It's a whole bunch of cool stuff, yeah. Bob. And, and it's and – it's, it's, it's just like going out HFDX, you know, it may be a good night. It may not be a good night. Um, but the thing is, I'm getting so many comments from people that have uh, just took my simple steps. And, and I'll be honest, I'm learning just like everybody, just like you, Bob. Mm -hmm. In the last couple of weeks, I'm, I'm learning. And uh, there's some people that are, this is all, this is all old hat right now. And uh, so what they've decided to do. What they decided and that's to uh, do. that's I have this uh, app called GoSat, and and that's what I'm tracking. So I'm tracking the ISS and a couple of other satellites right now. That's what you guys are hearing. Sorry about the cat shot. She has always gets to get on my shoulder for some reason. <laughs> so um, yeah, you know, I I found it really amazing uh, about a week ago. You posted something on the D74 Facebook group and and it, it just seemed to like start a wildfire and it seems like uh, doing these ISS uh, QSOs now or, or the, uh, uh, the these data uh, communications is become all the rage and 
Well, and, and it's it's so cool because I have been totally consumed with this for the last for the last week. Yeah, you're going to make it, Bob. Uh, but I promise you, turn the turn the power savings off on all your radios when you're doing this, because uh, if there's no reception going on, the radio will go to sleep. Mm-hmm. It'll take a beacon to wake it up, and then it may go to sleep before the next beacon. So make sure you turn all the power settings off. Okay. And uh, uh, there was one more thing I was going to say. Uh, it'll it'll come back to me. It's that part of that part of that bit about getting old. You'll remember when I say goodbye. Yes. Um, oh, yes. Now, yesterday I had when I had my real real good pass with the arrow. I did mm-hmm. have a very successful arrow. I bumped my spotter radio. I bumped my uh, my D seventy four. And I heard this weird noise, and right down there at uh, 145.80, it was slow scan TV. Now, what's the nice thing about this radio, uh, the Kenwood, is you. I programmed a PF key for the next time this happens, mm-hmm. and you can actually just record the SST signal. Just kind of keep keep tracking it, keep recording it. Come back into your uh, shack, take that audio file. And put it in a, a processor, and you can process the slow scan TV and get your image. And that, and I was going to do that yesterday, but I didn't have an SD card in it. I just didn't even think about it. So uh. anyway, that's just the way it is. I, I I get all excited watching for the satellite, and I'll have the wrong frequency, or I'll have the wrong uh, path. I'll have the the standard APRS path. So you have to kind of check this stuff before you get to uh, buck fever, if you know what I mean. Right, right. Hey, Don, before you go, I want to take, uh, I'm going to see if there's any questions for you. So if anybody in the, uh, in the group has any questions for Don about, um, uh, about contacting ISS or doing it on the D74 or D72, uh, shoot those right now. I have uh, I got a little bit of business uh, to do real quick, so I'm going to switch cameras here. Two. And uh, we have a few uh, super chats. Ham radio dude, thank you so much for the super chat there. And uh, let's see, I have to I have to do it again. And coming back, my brother Barnard, uh, thank you, 7.62. Got to leave early today, catch up later, bye gang. All right, well, Barnard, I will see you guys later. We'll come back to uh, to Dawn here. And uh, let's, uh, let me go take a quick look through the... Um, uh, through the chat here. Okay. From, uh, from Todd. Uh, Oh, and it won't show up. Uh, how much is the D 74? Well, the price for you just have, it's around four, four 99. You know, it just all depends on what the specials going on or whatever. And, 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 you know, you can, the D 72 is, is about $50 cheaper. Uh, the D 72 though is full is a duplex radio okay the uh the d74 is not duplex so you know we hadn't even got into voice satellite communications yet that's a whole different animal but a lot of people use this radio for voice and uh aprs but the d74 is it's more than it's the aprs radio uh it's got probably one of the best best screens out there in fact this part is the most expensive part of the radio and it is the same display in there in the Kenwood's NX 5300 series. Uh, besides APRS, it does D it does D Star, and it does uh, APRS, and it's got 220. So all you guys up there in the quiet zone in Northern California, you can use this uh, uh, to uh, work mm-hmm. on 220. Um, let's see, there it will also do Echo Link. Uh, GPS. Uh, it also it also has a fantastic uh, in the B band. Uh, you can pick up air uh, on all bands, mm-hmm. and it has a sideband receiver for HF, and it has a IF shift or IF filters 
in the ham bands. So you can use this as a spotter rig for your HF signal. And then one guy is actually using this on the satellite, uh, picking up sideband signals using the radio, this radio. Can't transmit on sideband, but he's using it to, <coughs> excuse me, to pick up a beacon. That's so cool. So that it is, is, it is, it is a lot of, ra it is a lot of radio and, and, you know, I mean, it's a lot of radio, but there's a lot of things you can do. There's a whole lot of things you can do with it. So, yeah. you know, that's, so it's a, it's a lot of, it's a lot of stuff there. If you didn't want to do with D star, then just get the D 72. You can still do echo link with it. Um, it is only a dual band, but it is duplex. So it will work uh, voice satellites very, very well. So, um, Question from uh, Clark here. So any radio that does APRS can do the ISS? That's correct. And I believe you've got, a, I think, uh, the uh, um, Yesu's, uh, FT3. FT3. Yeah, it do, it'll, do, uh, it'll do it too. There was something on the Yesu that a guy uh, uh, demonstrated. It has a different little ping, kind of like a pre, it's like a little preamble before you push it it makes kind of a funny sound but it doesn't broadcast it it's kind of a funny sound mm -hmm. so i thought that that was kind of interesting and i've i've also seen several people um send me pictures of their um of their yesu radio so and the other thing is is you could take a very simple cheap cheapo radio uh you know and add a tnc to it like a tiny track or something like that and you can do the same thing and that's what makes it all so cool, like a you know? thing you could do it kind of like a bow fan. You can do it. You could do it. it, it the ISS is not. It uh, uh, doesn't matter if it's uh, Chinese uh, RF or Japanese <laughs> RF or American RF. It's RF. You know. So you know. Yes, you could play with uh, expensive ones, but then you can get that part. That's part of the. That's part of the hobby is you can get some little cheapy thing and make it work. Mm -hmm. And and I think that there is. I think that there is some merit to how cheap you could do things. Now I've showed you some expensive antennas. They range from uh, $50 all the way up to $130, but you can build, I don't have one, but you can build a antenna for $15 using a simple measuring tape as, <clears throat> as samples. And so as elements by cutting them. So it's, that's, what's, that's what makes the hobby great. When I was in the Air Force Special Operations, we had these real expensive tactical SATCOMs and these nice uh, uh, circular polarized uh, dipole, uh, circular dipole antennas. And we were able to talk all over the place. Of course, it was commercial military grade stuff. Right. So then we, then we showed the special operators how to build a, a emergency antenna with some coat hanger wires and a paint, paint can lid and doing a doing a little phase splitting to where you could get a little circle polarization and uh, generals were amazed. So yes, it, uh, you don't have to spend $3,000. You can spend probably 30 cents and do the same thing. And, and when it comes to, uh, HF antennas, you know, or, or excuse me for HT antennas, the longer is always going to be better. If there was a way, if there was a way that you can make this little guy right here, one wavelength, it's going to, uh, and it's going to be $20. It's going to receive better than a duck. It's just it's just the physics of it. Yeah. As as far as my other beam antennas, receptions are about the same. Uh, I would give the uh, arrow and the elk just a little more because there's just more capture. There's more stuff capturing going on there. Mm -hmm. When it comes to trans transmitting performance, I don't have a way uh, to to actually test it. I still think that the the elk edged it out just a little bit. But some Ooh. guys say. Hey, for the same amount of money, you can get a duplexer built in. And I say, that's fine. It's, it's kind of whatever rocks your boat. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. Hey, Don, thank you so much for being on the show and, uh, and telling us, filling us all in about, uh, about the D-74, its capabilities on satellites and, and what, what you know about satellites. And you've had some success a lot more than I have. Um, well, you're you're gonna make it, buddy. And if it, oh, if yeah. you don't mind me plugging one more time, uh, if anybody's got any questions, they can email me at w6gps at yahoo.com. Uh, give me a little time. I'll put that uh, configuration up there. Um, yeah, I'm a I'm a big Kenwood fan. I'm a big Kenwood user. But if if uh, if you're a ham and you need help with anything, uh, I'm I'm not uh, I'm not uh, manufacturer driven. You know, I'm I'm 
I'm, I'm, I enjoy helping people with anything like that. Cool. Very cool. Very, very cool. Okay. Don, again, thanks. Um, I've got, uh, I've got Craig, uh, KM6 OYW, one of, uh, one of my local, uh, buddies around here who has had a lot of success, uh, with APRS and satellites. And so I'm going to have him jump in here and, uh, and talk about what he knows and, uh, and some of the other software, some of the other stuff. So anyway, Don, thanks again. And, uh, and I will talk to you real soon. All right, buddy. We'll see you. Okay. Bye. Bye. And, and we'll come back to, uh, come back to me and, uh, Craig cam six L Y W. Uh, if you are around and you're still, uh, still listening, go ahead and call in. Uh, we'll talk about some of the stuff. And if you guys have anything that you want to talk about on the show here today, this is kind of, this is our bullshit. This is our bullshit channel here. Uh, we get to kind of do what we want to do. Uh, we talk about whatever we want to talk about. There ain't no stupid questions because I guarantee you, if you've got a question about it, somebody else does too. And they're just afraid to ask the question. Uh, let's see. Uh, we'll get a couple of comments in here real quick. Um, let's see from Todd. Todd says in the core, we used to make satellite, satellite antennas out of beer cans. That's awesome. Uh, and James, how about the giant Abri HT antenna? Yes. Uh, about, and Tommy Tunes, about the, uh, the Arrow 2 better than the Elk? Uh, let's see. And we have Craig coming in here. So let me get, uh, let me get Craig up. And, uh, let me switch over here. Guys, this is, uh, this is one of my local buddies. Hang on. We gotta, we gotta get that one to, to focus, focus. Craig, how you doing, my friend? Oh, no sound out of Craig. I've got no Skype sound out of you. How about now, Bob? Oh, there you go. There All you right. go. Now you're, you're rocking. Craig, uh, welcome welcome to the show. I think this is the first time you've been on the show. Um, let me turn that down. I got a couple of guys calling on uh, on the wires X side, but uh, we're gonna continue to, to keep going over here. Uh, Craig, uh, you've got a little bit more experience. You've been doing satellites for uh, for quite a while now, I guess, right? And APRS, I yeah more will, more so APRS, both of them together at the same time. That's the that's the best part. I will call you an expert in APRS <laughs> and satellites, and so uh, I bring you in. And there uh, there is, uh, let's see, let me go back to camera one and uh, and the phone here. Uh, this is uh, the ISS actually coming into uh, coming into view, and on this screen here, you could see the ISS is uh, coming in from the south, and I guess it's going to make um, it's going to make a uh, northerly path. It's a pretty low pass. So uh, so anyway, Craig. Uh, uh, Tell us about, uh, I, we want to know about software, antenna positioning, uh, everything that you know. Fill me in. Make me an expert. Cool. And I've got people actually listening to me when I talk about this stuff. That's what's so cool about your channel. You know, you can go drone on and on to your wife about this stuff. They don't appreciate it. You can send your wife an SMS message through the International Space Station, through SMS GTE, and she'll get it on her cell phone, you know, all from your radio. And, uh, you know, when you explain that to her, it's like, yeah, so. 
But you guys know how cool this is, you know, how to, to get a message through. And yeah, you know, Bob, I'm looking at the International Space Station uh, tracker. I use isstracker.com. It's just a website that's out there that, that seems to keep track of the, where the space station is. And yeah, it's over Baja right now. And like you said, it's a little low on the horizon. Um, you'd really have to, uh, I don't know, up the power, or keep it down low on the horizon. You know, if like you had any trees or something, you're probably not going to hit it. What I would do is I would wait 90 minutes and it'll be flying over uh, Eureka uh, and, and, and the, and the three-corner, uh, you know, under the uh, northern Nevada on the next pass. So that would be a really high pass. That would be one to try out. So after this show, if you've all got your, uh, your D74s configured, go ahead and give this a try. I've actually done it without one of those cool antennas Don just showed us without a Yagi. I've just held like a 19-inch whip and just kind of maneuvered it up, you know, and then you know, I could start hearing the space station. I would just start sending beacons, and it actually works. You know, I can't guarantee it, but it's there. So the way I operate satellites, so everything Don said is gospel. You know, I sure wish when I started this, I had, you know, a YouTube video like yours uh, with Don telling ex exactly how to set things up because, you know, you just kind of – transmitting blindly i think aprs is one of the best first ways to operate a satellite because it's a simplex frequency you don't have an uplink frequency and a downlink frequency to worry about there's no crossover stuff um, it's all simplex it's all the same frequency um so yeah what i do you know don's obviously the kinwood representative but uh, i i am not affiliated with anyone but i i'm the yesu guy so I, i'm going to give you the other half of, of the hardware story um and in addition to all this i'm a software engineer as much as a radio guy and 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 i'm in like a lot of ham radio operators i'm you know i'm lazy and cheap i'm almost as lazy as i am cheap <laughs> um so i don't want to buy a bunch of fancy hardware you know i just use the you know ftm 400 here in the shack and the antenna sticking out of the roof no fancy yogis and i I can, in fact, operate, operate the ISS, uh, especially on high passes. Um, so what I do, um, you know, operating the radio and pressing buttons is cool and all, but it's, since I'm a software engineer, I actually came up with a device called a DigiPi, and you can actually see this on my channel, and this is a shameless plug, so that's KM6LYW Radio, and I've got the plans on how to build one of these guys, and this is a software modem um, and a way to drive your radio from over Bluetooth via your android or uh, android device uh, there's a there's an android app called aprs droid and if you get that you can connect it to this little bluetooth uh, raspberry pi that i connect up to my radio and you can just type messages to people and have qsos just by typing on your android device and i actually got these these kind of mocked up here i don't have a, a high gain antenna to show how it's going to work on the iss but uh, let me see if this is working here so this is what i call the digipi and he has a little cable here that plugs into my Yesu FT1. And this would work on the FT2, the FT3. In fact, I, I've done it. So this Raspberry Pi is hooked up to this radio transmitter. And we're going to pretend this is the space station. So this is like Bob and Doug McKenzie up here floating along, right? And uh, what, what is the ISS frequency? It's 145825. We, sh we, we should share that over and over, right? Um, so what I can do with this Raspberry Pi in this Android device... This is APRS Droid on this, and I can start, I can send a uh, a position packet just to, and this is what we would do at the space station. So I'm going to do a send position, and it's over Bluetooth. It's going to go to this DigiPi uh, that you can build on my channel, and it's going to go through this Yesu transmitter, and then that's going to go over to this radio. You should hear it over here, um, and we'll pretend this is the space station. So I'm going to send my position. I can click here. And that was it. Hopefully you saw the radios light up, but this is an easy way to do your ISS APRS digipeter work instead of if you really don't want to type on a radio, you know, that can be inconvenient. So if you have a cell phone, a Raspberry Pi and a little bit of soldering skills and some software, um, you can really get a cool space station set up. In fact, um, I can sit back in my easy chair. Uh, here at home, and, and the Bluetooth range it makes it all the way to my FTM 400, and I can just sit in my easy chair and send my wife like an email or an SMS message. I, I think a lot of people don't realize that you can, in fact, do email and SMS over a PRS packet radio. So that's that's the introduction to that. So the software on this, again, I'm a software engineer, so the software running on this little that little Raspberry Pi, uh, the, the, the important one to remember is called Dire Wolf. You remember from Game of Thrones, the big wolves, right? They called them <laughs> Dire Wolves. Um, well, anyways, there's the software that you want to do APRS on the Raspberry Pi or any computer is called Direwolf. It's an open source project. 
Um, it's running on this Pi now. It listens to uh, this APRS Droid app for Android. So they work together really well. And then if you can put together a hardware interface for your uh, your transmitter or your transceiver, um, you can do APRS packet radio from your easy chair over Bluetooth with your uh, Wi-Fi device or cell phone. So that's that's the pinnacle of, of my uh, being cheap. Um, and lazy, you know, I, I can I can do this from the easy chair. I don't even have to touch a radio. Um, if if you do have a little bit of money, there's another device called a Mobile Link D that does kind of the same thing, um, and it actually comes with all the adapter cables, everything you need. It's really plug and play. I don't have one personally because, like I said, I'm cheap. So you know, I built one using this uh, this Raspberry Pi. So anyways, my 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 channel KM6LYW Radio has the instructions and schematics on how to build this. Uh, some of the software to configure it is there as well. So that's just kind of a software developer's approach to APRS packet radio and operating the uh, the space station. Oh my god. That it, dude, that is like so far above my pay grade, my my mental ability. Uh and plus I've been an Apple guy for you know the last 10 15 years, so Androids and Windows stuff is really really foreign to me. <clears throat> Just is, but well, maybe um, maybe there's an APRS Droid app for for the uh, the iPhone uh, ecosystem. I, I don't know. I, there's got to be. I, maybe you can search. I the, will. The, the, the I store. will have to take a look and see. That would be. I think that would be just unbelievably awesome. Now, how? And I saw it looked like you had a um, uh, a T base connector that you were plugging into something. But we didn't see what you were plugging it into, and you can't, you couldn't have been plugging that into the radio. Yeah, that ex I was. Um, let me see if I can, if I can demonstrate that here. You know, I'll, I'll give like a beer to anyone can, who can figure out how to reverse the mirroring of my webcam here. So, so yeah, there was a there's an RG12 connector. So this that a cable that I had to make this plugs into my Yaesu radio here. And hopefully you can see this. And I just made a little adapter cable, and this is the cable. Uh, that works with the FT1 Yesu. Um, I've made other cables that work with the FT, uh, FTM100, FTM400, and the and and the little Raspberry Pi actually have you know this is the output of that. So the you know the audio in, audio out, the push to talk circuit is in this little cable, and that plugs into this RG12 like a telephone jack, because I just had it laying around in the garage. That's why I used it. That was the primary reason I used that. And then of course that plugs into the mic speaker mic. Of this radio, and then you're good to go. And now you just control this radio through the Raspberry Pi via that cable over Bluetooth to your Wi Fi or cellular device. And that's it. And that's really the laziest way you can possibly operate the International Space Station. You don't even have to get up from your easy chair. Dude, lazy that is and cheap, cheap and lazy. That is freaking insanely awesome. Very, very cool. Um, so now you're using the ISS tracker on your uh, on your home computer. Yeah, there's a website called ISSTracker.com. Um, it's you know it's necessary and in my case sufficient. You know I can see when it when it's coming up. There's another site called N2YO I believe .com, and it has tracking for all of the objects in space that have anything to do with. A, any man-made object, honestly. Um, yeah, and you, you just load the ISS in there. There's a couple other interesting APRS satellites. So there's NO84. It's called Parkinson Sat. And if it's been in the sun for a while, its batteries might be charged up enough to actually do a digipeat. And it works exactly like the International Space Station. In fact, you set the digipath to ARISS just like you would on the International Space Station. For, so look for object NO84. That's Parkinson Sat. And if its batteries are charged up, you'll hear from it. Nice. Uh, any others that do APRS? There's one other that comes to mind, and this is a uh, Air Force satellite called Falcon Sat 3. Um, it was retired by the Air Force, but it's been picked up by AMSAT. And what's interesting about Falcon Sat 3 is it actually runs at 9600 baud. Um, so it's a little more advanced. Uh, go ahead and work the ISS first before you try and get into Falcon Sat 3. But it's also an APRS digipeter. What's interesting is it's at 9600 baud. And the digipath you need to remember for that one is different. That's the hardest part of, to remember is to set your digipath to the right route, so to the right host. So it's ARISS for the space station. And for Falcon Sat 3, it's P. 
uh, FS-1. So that's Papa Falcon Sat-1. And make sure that's in your uh, your digi path. And then you'll start hearing, you'll be repeated by Falcon Sat-3. Um, that one has an equatorial orbit, so it's always low on the horizon, unfortunately, for North uh, or even South America. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the ISS has a much more uh, polar orbit, and so everyone gets to play with the ISS, no matter okay. where you are on the Earth for the most part. But the Falcon Sat-3 kind of hangs out on the equator, so it's low to the south. Okay. And uh, and and I know that Falcon Sat three also has a uh, an, a separate uplink and downlink. Or I um yes it does doesn't it? you know I didn't even mention that I'm boy I'm glad you did uh, mention that yeah so not only is it weird you know in that regard it, yeah it's also at ninety six hundred baud um, yeah I don't have the frequencies offhand but Falcon Sat three go ahead and look that one up yeah great point yeah yeah. Okay, uh, Craig. Anything else? Uh, anything else you can enlighten me with? No, I, I think you've done a great job here. Um, between Don and myself, you know, there's a small chance people might be able to bounce packets off uh, space objects. So uh, <laughs> let us know. Let, gonna... Tell Bob if you got it to work. Send me a message through the ISS. My call signs: Kilo Mike Six Lima Yankee Whiskey. You know, I'm in California, but uh, you could be in Idaho, and we could send packets back and forth over VHF through one of these space stations. And again, the, the, if you want to build this big mess that I just showed you, uh, KM Six LYW Radio on YouTube. Got a little schematic, a video, kind of a demo of what I just did here. And and, and it goes into a little more depth if you're into using the Raspberry Pi, Bluetooth, and, and you know, and, and making it harder than it needs to be, right? Very, very cool. Very cool. Uh, Craig, I am going to let's go uh, before I let you go, I want to see if there's any questions from any of the guys out there in the chat. And uh, let's see. Give us the URL again from uh, from Carlos Life at Terminal Velocity, who's our our uh, skydiving mm -hmm. hand. Um, what you URL do you want? The uh, your URL you your URL or you're just uh, Cam Six Lyw on YouTube, right? Yeah, I think I just typed that into our chat room. So okay, perfect, perfect. Uh, let's see. Awesome stream. Just what the doctor ordered. I'm going to go ahead and move off to, uh, to the interview cam so I can actually put up a few of these, uh, APRS app packet pocket from James uh, Hannibal. My friend there at quirky QRP, uh, is available for the Mac. So I guess, uh, I guess I'm in business there. Uh, let's see. And, uh, yeah, Carlos, uh, yeah, Carlos, you do, you need to try this. Very, very cool. Uh, another APRS iOS app is APRS pro on the, uh, app store. And what is the Digipath setting on the FT3? Because I do not see ARR, a is it, it's A R I S S, not A R R I S, right? It's Alpha Romeo India Sierra Sierra A R I S S. Okay. Yeah, and it's critical. It will not respond unless that's your digipath. I now, promise. I've done it many times. Now I've also seen R O I S S. What is that? So you, you'll see R S zero I S S and packets coming back from the space station because that is the Russian call sign for the space station itself. And it'll send out a little CQ packet, a little beacon, just to let you know it's there. Watch for it. It'll say RS0 ISS International Space Station. So you know you're on the right frequency if you see that. Ah, and let me see. Let me pull up my, uh, turn on my, my little Kenwood here and go over here. Uh, the, the frequency, 145.825. So that's the uh, that's the frequency for the International Space Station. And uh, let's see. Um, yep. And then James is also talking about there is the uh, uh, NO84. And let's see. Um, from Raymond, would you prefer the Arrow or the Elk? Do you use, you, you don't use a Yagi at all? 
No, you remember, you have to go back to the fact that I'm both uh, cheap and lazy. So, yeah, I would have to buy one and step outside to use it. So, no, I just use a, uh, a vertical out of the, out of my roof. I'm, I'm sure there's better. The Yagis are much better. In fact, Bob, I remember seeing one of your videos. You just walked outside and just made a voice contact. Like yeah. first try, right? With that, your arrow? <laughs> that was yeah. kind of like my first try. Completely lucked out. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and guys bag on me, so so now I will I will totally say that I have been trying this. I have been I have been working on this since Sunday. I mean, like like a full time job. Every time the space station has gone over, uh, if I'm awake, I have walked outside with this setup. And tried to make a contact, and I have not made a contact yet. But I'm so remember determined. What, remember what Don said about the trailing edge? I think the antenna on the, on the International Space Station is on the rear bumper. So you usually get more traffic as it flies overhead and descends. Um, so that's really oh. your prime time window. I think there's some shadow up there. Or maybe, you know, Bob and Doug McKenzie, like, kicked it or something. But when it's approaching, it's pretty low gain. You're, it's it's, it's kind of hard to get through. So that's something to keep in mind. It's just an extra tip, you know, to give okay. you a, a little more advantage. Okay. Very, very cool. Uh, let's see. Um, let's see. So, uh, Okay. Uh, Carlos, life at terminal velocity says he only sees wide one and wide two as options on the radio. So, um, uh, Carlos on the FT three and let me, let me turn on the FT three and, uh, and I'll go into, I'm going to, I'm going to change this out to camera and we're going to go to camera Camera three. So you're going to go into your main menu here and go to APRS. And I think it is, it's not the destination because that's, that's the radio. Uh, oh my God. I forget which one it is, but it's the path. Something path. Uh, Digipath. So, um, P3 is the wide one, wide two. So you're going to go out of that and let's go over to P4. And and I put, Ar is it Eris uh, dash six? Is that it, Craig? It's just A-R-I-S-S, -S, nothing more. Okay. So uh, I would take out the dash six and and actually you could go over and... Oop. And you can uh, just get rid of that, maybe. It won't go away. There it is. And so then you could just put, plug in Eris, and that is, uh, that's the path. And that's how you do it on the FT3. Uh, let's go back over to the split screen. Uh, let's see. I have no other questions. There is, oh, oh, uh, let's see from James Hannibal. Um, and I've got to go back out to camera for you guys to see it. Well, anyway, um, uh, James says there's also an APRS satellite brick. Bricksat 2 N0103. Uh, I believe that's also on that same frequency as the ISS. So um, that's the beautiful thing that I love about uh, about this. Um, and let me let me just go back out to to this. Is I can I could set up for passes. And I can look at all the different satellites. And if I go to satellites, I can actually say which satellites I want to see. And I've turned off almost everything other than the, uh, than the APRS satellites that I've found and, um, and the, the few FM birds that I've found. And there is, I mean, look through this. There is just a 
just a ton of satellites. And I could go back there and that tells me the next satellite passes, AO92, which is a good FM uh, satellite that I've made contacts on. And that is going to be its path, or that is actually its its current path right now. That's where it is. It's already kind of made its pass. Um, so anyway, Craig, before I let you get back to whatever the hell you want to do, uh, anything, any last minute, anythings for, uh, for the group. Now, just a big thanks, Bob, for having me on here and, uh, and, and talking about APRS in the community. It's, it's, it's really an exciting technology. I, I know it's old, but uh, people don't use it to its full extent. So uh, you're here to help everyone here, Bob. Thank you very much. Hey, thank you. And Craig, I will talk to you later, maybe at the uh, club meeting tomorrow or the net tonight. Who knows? I hope so. I hope yeah. so. All right. 73, Bob. Thanks. Okay, 73. And we'll come back to camera camera number one. <laughs> okay. So, guys, uh, that's kind of it in a nutshell about uh, APRS and, um, and working satellites on APRS. Uh, the next pass coming up here. Actually, let me go to, let's go over here. And ISS is going to be coming up here in, and uh, we can actually see one hour and two minutes. You could see up at the top of the screen up there, uh, there's a little countdown. So you could see that. And uh, that is, uh, that's when the ISS will be coming by. And then you could, this is actually a compass view. And this is that GoSat Watch app. I bought this. It's not free. Um, but like now I am, I'm facing or the, the phone is facing due north. So you could see where that pass is going to be. And if you don't know what direction it's going to be, that's going to tell you what direction you'll see. Uh, that next satellite. Uh, let's see. Let me take a few uh, a few comments, questions, suggestions uh, from uh, Islan. Is it hello from Malaysia? Wow, that's awesome! Freaking Malaysia. <laughs> uh, let's uh, let me go out to here real quick. And uh, I've got to get Craig. I got to hang up with you because I got to get some more bandwidth here. Um, let's see what else. Uh, Bob, uh, great show today. Glad I showed up for this. From Todd. Todd, thank you for showing up, my friend. Always a always a pleasure. Um. Why haven't you made a contact? Ah, maybe this is why I haven't made a contact. I don't know why. I, I don't know why I haven't made a freaking contact. Part of the reason is, is I haven't, you know, the first day I tried this, I went outside and I heard packets and I picked up a couple of packets. Um, since then, picking up packets and getting them into the into the radio has been like insanely hard. I've picked up just a few packets. Uh, nothing, nothing concrete, so to speak. I, you know, here's what I'm having a problem with. I hold my antenna, and I'm I'm like, okay, this. Uh, this seems to be the orientation that the FM birds like is keeping my 440 along the side here, keeping a two meter vertically. And this seems to be the preferred orientation for the ISS, but I don't know. Um, it, it's all freaking magic to me. 
Um, it is uh, it is all magic. Got a couple of guys talking there on the wires X node. So I don't know. I I, I I know what I'm supposed to be doing. I don't know if it's actually working. Uh, how does one from AA? How does one receive the QSL card from the ISS? I don't know uh, because I haven't made a contact. I don't know. Hoping to get one one day. That'll be another trophy of mine. Uh, let's see. Oh, this is cool. I've never seen from uh, the BMXer Don. Uh, he's never seen this stuff. Dude, uh, Don, there is so many freaking little rabbit holes that we could dive down within this ham radio hobby it is un freaking believable i have I, I have something reversed what do i i have the long one well all these are the same i have the long one up here by the handle i've got the short one down here so i believe i have it set up right i think VHF. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, that that's right. VHF are the long ones. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I yes, I had that wrong. Um. So I I I think I've got all that set up right. Uh. Okay. So from uh from Life at Terminal Velocity, and I know I oh from Bill Brady. Hang on, Bill. I'll get you in there in just a second. Uh, in P4, done and done. Let me cross my fingers for the next pass. Yeah. Uh, Carlos, good luck on the next pass. And you'll probably freaking get it before I do. Uh, let's see. We have... Bill Brady. Great content today. Bill, thank you so much. Guys, we have 70 guys on the stream, 57 thumbs up so far. Let's make it 70 thumbs up uh, before the end of the stream there. And uh, let's see. Yeah, uh, Tim, um, I'm probably going to watch the replay because I know there's so much of this stuff that I've missed, and I want to see it again. Uh, this is going to be... This is going to be one of those that is going to be an instructional video for me. Uh, so I'm sure if it's going to if it's going to be instructional for me, it'll be instructional for a few more of you guys. And I, I know if uh, there's probably more of you guys out there that know a lot about doing this stuff. So uh, let's hear from you guys too. The UHF ones are the short ones. Yes, Jim, thank you. That's totally my screw up. You know, when I think about that, I go, yeah, you know what? You're right. Shorter bandwidth, shorter antennas. But yeah, I'm uh, I'm, I'm screwed up. So anyway, uh, let's see. Yes, life at terminal velocity. I had ARISS. Dash six, not ARS. Yes, uh, Carlos, I know, but I actually I use uh, the uh, the D seventy four right now for uh, a lot of these satellite contacts. That's this is what I'm using. I kind of like the interface better on this. Uh, all I have to do is really, and I'm going to go to camera, uh, go to camera three again. When I've got this set up, and I, to do, um, and I'm going to plug an antenna on here, just so, so when I'm on here, I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and set this up right now for AP, APRS, nope, I guess not, uh, we'll go up here, we'll go to APRS, and I've got the A side set up for this. So all I have to do is turn the beacon off. And I could turn the beacon on. 
and it'll beacon out right then and there. And if, like uh, Dawn said, somebody is on, um, somebody's beaconing, and I'm listening to a beacon, and I hit that beacon, it'll it'll go out and do that as soon as it's clear. Um, but if I, but this will actually work in this configuration, even. Well, if I if I have the squelch opened up, let me uh, let me bang my squelch there, and I could turn that off, and it'll still go out. See, squelch is open, and if I do that, that'll still beacon out. So let me turn that off. And uh, we'll come back to camera two. So that's what I like about that. On the FT3, um, and let me go back over here. On the FT3, I actually have to go out and, uh, let's see. If I'm uh, if I'm on there, I, I have to hit the FW and then beacon. I've, I've got to hit the beacon and I've got the wrong address, so it's not going to do it. But every time I want to do it, I need to do that. So there's two key presses as opposed to one key press uh, to do it on the uh, on the D74. Uh, let's see. So we've been going for about an hour and a half now. Um, I definitely, I want to thank uh, the guys that, that uh, did the super chats. Uh, I actually also want to uh, want to thank. Uh, let's see, all of my patrons, the patrons, uh, you guys get a huge thumbs up for me. I thank you guys so much. Um, I am actually thinking about, you know, there, there's not a, there's not a whole ton of you guys, but doing a live stream just for you guys, uh, as an invite only kind of a thing. So, uh, a ton of thanks to those guys. Uh, let's see other things there. If you guys have not hit that subscribe button please hit that subscribe button up somewhere up in here and uh and also hit the uh the bell notification so you get notified when i do new uh when i do new videos uh let's see be sure and check out my patreon and i don't know you know if you guys have been following uh, some of the news patreon got hit with uh, with a bad court ruling and I don't know how much longer patreon's going to be around so I've got to find another venue because I think patreon might be uh, going under uh, in the next uh, year or so due to uh, Sargon of a cod and a few other of my my conservative, uh, favorite guys to to watch, or they used to be, and now they're all on Parlor. Uh, also, guys, you can uh, you can send me a donation on PayPal, and I really appreciate it. Everything goes back into the channel. It all goes right back into the channel. It's not like you know I'm not getting rich on this stuff by any means. Um. Let's see. Got my numbers wrong. Uh, let's see. Nope. Uh, the new Glock 19 custom. Don't know where that came from. FT3 only works APRS on VFOB. I don't know what VFOB is. Uh, let's see. Uh, AO100 sat is a geostationary orbit satellite, which means I guess it doesn't move or it moves along with the Earth, so it's not like it's going in and out of, of our, um, 
of our whatever, our area. Uh, okay, guys, again, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, this has been a really fun stream. Currently 71 guys on here, 73 thumbs up. So again, thank you very, very much. Let me get, uh, let me get this thing focused. Focus, focus, focus. There it goes. Um, guys, I have nothing else. It has been an hour and a half. Thank you again for spending uh, my lunch hour or hour and a half with me. And thank you for spending part of your afternoon with me. Uh, I have had a great time today. I hope, I sincerely hope that uh, that this just kind of grows from here. Again, guys, leave me a comment. Uh, send me an email. Leave a comment. If you're watching this on the replay, leave a comment below. Uh, or you could send me an email at, and let me see if I could pull up my email thing here. Uh, I got to find, I got to find it. Email. Yep, there it is. K6UDA radio at Gmail. So um, with that, guys, uh, I'm looking for show ideas, questions from you guys that I turn into, into shows, both these live stream shows and, uh, and the regular stuff. Uh, be sure and watch tomorrow as I, uh, as my patrons already know, because they've been watching uh, tomorrow, I am updating the uh, the FTM 400s. Well, these are actually now updated, but I'm going to show you guys exactly how to do it without bricking it. <laughs> because I really thought I was going to brick the shit out of them. Thanks. Anyway, guys, uh, again, uh, yes, thank you all. For the, the radios and, uh, oh, that sucked. <laughs> that sucked. <laughs> my new, uh, my new baby there. And yes, I keep indexed here. Um, nothing in the, uh, in the trigger well. Hollow Sun, that thing is awesome. I can't even, I don't even know if, there it is. Uh, that thing is just so cool. That is so cool. Anyway, love my new little G19. I know it's a uh, it's a Gen 3 and, uh, and and I can't do I'm a lefty. So I haven't even been able to find a holster for this yet. Um I've got a few holsters coming. Just had to show it off again cuz I really like it. It's so cool. Guys, um, that is, uh, that's it. Ooh, God, I'm missing a whole bunch of, uh, whole bunch of stuff. Uh, great stream, thumbs up. Thank you, guys. Um, Craig, thank you. Don, thank you so much for, uh, uh, for being on the stream, both of you guys. Um, my brother Orson, who's going to set me up with his FTM 300 for a review. Um, and a, uh, the, uh, yeah, from Todd. Uh, Todd, leave a comment in the, uh, in the comments. Uh, I haven't been able to find that one. I do have, uh, I do have a tri-band Bofang. And I will definitely work on, uh, on a review of that one. Uh, let's see. Guys, I guess that's it. So, until next time, I'm Bob, K6UDA, and I'm out of here. 7-3.